Primitive Fall Crafts, stay tuned. My name is Jersey. I'm going to show you how to make this faux rusty tin can using no salt, no peroxide, and no vinegar. I washed the cans, dried them really well with soap and water. Then I like to take like my little bat and I like to bang them up a little bit so it makes it look like a really old can. I don't bother getting the glue off. It doesn't bother me. I just rub as much as I can and when the paint goes over it, it will cover it. And I like to use the Rust-Oleum Hammered Brown. It gives it a really nice coverage. This way when you do your Mod Podge and Cinnamon, if every speck doesn't get covered, it will cover it and all blend. So let me go spray those. I'm going to give them an even coat and then we'll be right back. Now if you want to coffee dye this, do it before you do this. Otherwise it's really going to smudge everything. So I have a little bit of instant coffee, some very hot water. This is something you cannot go back and forth, you cannot back and forth, back and forth. It's like a one-time deal because the laser ink will smear. So I put it on a flat surface, one coat. Let this dry flat just the way it is. You don't really want to work it too much because it will take the ink off. And let that dry and then you can go ahead and proceed with the next step. Now you can print this out on scrapbook paper or light paper that has a muddled or grunge look and you don't even have to do that if you do not want to. And let me show you the next step. Lay this flat over here to dry. You can cut these apart with scissors or rotary. I left a little gray mark, so you can cut them and then cut them more individually. So if this was coffee dyed, like we just did, and it was 100% dry, then you would go to the next step. So I find two ways to do this. If you did not want to coffee dye it like I did. And here's the one that is now dried. This is the one we coffee dyed. And this is the one that was not coffee dyed. And this is the difference what it would look like. This is coffee dyed. This was not coffee dyed. This was cinnamon over it. You can take Dollar Tree cinnamon, put some in a dish, take a regular cotton ball, Dip it in there, and again, lightly, you don't want to take that ink off. See the difference of the two already? So this is if you don't want to go through the coffee dye, you can do it like this. Then what I usually will do is just give it a blow off. Here is an inker. I like to edge the edge. You can either do this two ways. You can leave it before you cut out. Let me move this aside. You can take your anchor and you can lightly do the edges before you cut it out. That's one way of doing it. My preferred method is I like to take it in my hand, hold this kind of loose so it, it gives a little give and turn it different ways. You don't want all your lines going one way. It all depends how grungy you want it. I like mine grungy, really grungy. Of course, you don't want to go over all the writing. Now that's all I did with this one. That's if you want it sort of plain and you don't want to go the extra mile, that's fine. You can leave it like that. But the way I like to do it, I like to crumble it up, open it back up, smooth it out, and then where the black ink is, sprinkle it a little bit more in different directions. You don't want all your lines going one way. Smooth it out. Go back in with your inker 
find some creases or make a crease. It's best to do it where they naturally occurred. And you want them going different directions. You don't want them all going one way. You can even make one where you want one. Open it back up. How cool is that? And then you can just take your cinnamon if you want. Blend it, feather it. You can tear some of the edges. What I like to do, I like to tear them and then go back. Tear it like this, because you don't want a real sharp white line. Go back with your inker like that. This is my favorite method like this. I prefer this. I like it to look really old, wrinkled. Play around with it. Try different ways. This was done like this while it was still on the piece of paper. I rarely do that. This one, I took this in and I lightly pulled it, up, pulled it over it. And it gave the little streaking effect and I did a and I did a grunge. This is the one we just did. But my favorite method is crinkling it and going back. I also, I like antiquing the paper, I like tearing it. Tearing it's the best because when you put it on the can, it really looks old. This is my preferred method. Play around with it, try it. I'm gonna go check on the cans and see if they're dry. Make sure you go to the see more section down below I have a full sheet of the smaller ones and a full sheet of the larger ones. You can download right now. Nothing to do, they're free. Watch the video, hit the show more, and the link is there for you to go print these out. Now I usually work on this. Because the Mod Podge comes right off, ink comes right off, paint comes right off, everything just comes right off. And here's the cans all sprayed. Now, where the glue was, I always put that in the back because these are always on a shelf. They're always somewhere where you never ever see the back. So I find where the glue is and I turn it toward the back and I work toward the front. So I have my label, put a very light coat of Mod Podge over it or you can use Elmer's glue, whatever you prefer. I put the back of the can down and then I position this about where I want it. Now here's where the patience comes in. So you want to put a coat of Mod Podge on and you have to let it dry. If you continue with the next step it will get cinnamon all over it and go toward the edges. Use your hand to make sure it's all down flat because you don't want cinnamon underneath it, it will pull up the label. Let this dry 15, 20 minutes, up to a half hour before you proceed with the next step. Now you can leave it like this and not proceed with the next step. All depends how grungy you like it. See, that looks good just from the hammered color. But I always like all the cinnamon to match. Pour my Mod Podge right in the container. Now you want to be careful and try not to get any on the label. This is why you did the label first and let it dry. What I like to do first with the Mod Podge and cinnamon, I have imaginary line at the end of the labels and I do the back first. You can get a very little on the edges and then feather it out with the cotton ball. I'll show you that in a minute. This doesn't dry instantly. You have a minute or two to work with it. And it doesn't matter if you go this way or this way. I just like to get it in the grooves. I like to move my Mod Podge out of the area. You can sprinkle this on. But what I like to do, I like to just put my hands in here and like when you're sprinkling salt when you're baking. Tap it off. Don't panic if you get it on there. As long as you didn't get that wet, it'll be fine. I'll show you in a minute. 
And for the fine edges, I like to just dip my cotton ball in. You can do this actually on all of it if you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Tap it off. And you can go in with a rag or a washcloth. Make sure it's 100% dry and see it all came off. Long as you do not to get that label wet, it will come off. You just want to wipe it gently. And it's okay if it gets overflow on it. That looks really good. I'm very pleased with it. So now I'm going to do the top. And get you can get near the label a little bit. You don't want it on there. And it doesn't matter if it's thicker in spots. So for the first part of it, I try to get it dusted before I bring in the cotton ball. And if you miss a little, no big deal, you just go in. And you don't want a hard line of starting and stopping of cinnamon. You don't want that. So you want to feather it in. And now we're going to do the bottom. And that's why it was good that the can was sprayed. And we got a hard little line. I'm going to put some more in and feather it in. You can get a little on the edges so we can feather it. You can leave it on there like that, which I'm going to. I like the muddled look. If you want to read some more, you can just gently rub it off. Granted, where it was mod podged in cinnamon just now, a lot of it will not come off. So there you have that. I do not bother doing the top because I'm going to show you now the finished product. Dumps right back in. No waste. There are many ways to decorate your can. You can add jute, tie it. Also, I have drilled holes in the ends before and put a piece of rusty wire and then you can hang it up actually with this right on it you can hang it from a shelf the fireplace mantle whatever it looks really cute I have some dried natural flowers or dried sprigs all I did was take a few off trim them down and put them right on the side but get creative you can use faux berries and I did the candle the same way. You could spray paint the candle if you wanted to. You can put ta painter's tape around this. It doesn't bother me. I'm going to do just like we did the can. And it doesn't matter if it has cinnamon in it. You could actually put cinnamon in the Mod Podge. I'll show you. And it'll save you the step of adding it later. You can light as dark as you want. Even though I have cinnamon in this, I still will sprinkle some on there. Roll it in it like a grunge candle if you want. Tap it off. It's best to let it dry. Like literally just leave it alone, let it dry. Because if you keep touching it and trying to fix it, you're going to knock it off. And that's it for the candle. Now comes the fun part, decorating. This really needs to dry 20 minutes or more. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to add the wire. What I like to do is, this is just a very thin craft wire. You can get as thick as gauge as you want. What I like to do is insert it in the can. All the way down the bottom. It's still wet, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to. And then I just crank it over. Same thing with the next one. I'm gonna fast forward that. You can use Spanish moss if you'd like. 
What I like to do, I place the candle first, and then I, op I make a wreath out of the Spanish moss, and I place it inside of it. How cute is that? Now this was the label where we mod podged the top. I'm going to show you ones where I did not. You can get these LED lights at the Dollar Tree. I got them just to show that you can. I am not a fan of colors. I get my LED lights from Amazon. I'll leave the link below. This is what it will look like if you don't put cinnamon on it. And it's not a bad thing. So here's the difference. Cinnamon and non-cinnamon. It all depends what your preference is. I'm not going to um, put cinnamon in on this right now. I just wanted to show you. I will go back later and put cinnamon on that one. And let me show you how I decorate these next two cans. And here's where the corn comes in. This is corn silk. I get a lot of corn during the summer. I have a few videos. I'll check them out up over there. I saved the corn silk for my crafts. What I like to do is I place the candle on first. I take some corn silk and I wrap it around and I like the black part to be in the front. You don't have to, but I like more grunge. Same thing with this one. I put the candle down and I just wrap it lightly, corn silk. And again, you could use Spanish moss, that's up to you. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. Next week I am doing something super, super cute that uses this method, but not the candles. We're gonna be using the faux rust method. So stay tuned for next week. Please share on social media. Until next time, this is Jersey saying, have a good day.